My name's Richard French. We live here in McCulley's Gap. Uh, we moved here in 1985. When we first came here, there were very few trees. So, for example, in the paddocks, there's one, there's an ironbark over there, and there are two here, and there are two there, and that's all that would have been between us and St Helia's. There were none on the driveway, there was one at the front gate, and there were a few in a section where the fence had fallen down so the cattle couldn't get in there. There were no trees at all on the river flat. We've spent some of the time over the last 37 years, how long has it been, um, trying to change that. We've planted nearly 3,000 trees, we think. And this particular project, we changed a little bit. Part of what we're trying to do, I'm aiming to have a negative carbon footprint for my life. I think if I can live to 80, I might have made it. Um, here, however, I'm trying to return a gully into the swamp that it once was or like what we expect it might have been. Um, through behind me there's dams so we have started to fence this off. So a couple of years ago we thought that we'd like to um, go back to something of the wetland that was here before partly because they're apparently excellent carbon sinks but partly because we'd really like to encourage um, some of the bird life and other um, animal life. Part of the reason for the tree bank behind us was to allow a little bit of um, native animal movement. And so we are aiming to slow the movement of water through this gully. Um, we, it's fenced off and it's pretty heavily vegetated, which has been helped by the last couple of damp years. Um, we're able to pump water in it to keep it wet. Um, so we're going to build low weirs I suppose you'd call them, just to slow that water up. I've been moving logs that we have on the farm and we might see some of those further down. Um, and we're trying to plant this out with trees. It's, we're already seeing a lot more frogs and things here, um, maybe even some snakes, that doesn't worry me too much. And so the idea is slowly over the next couple of decades, these trees will grow and the water will accumulate and sit and it'll turn back into boggy wetland. When we first started we planted trees down on the river flat. There were no trees there at all and thus there was no shade at all for any of our stock. We don't want them to have to stand in the sun all the time. So that was in the first trees we planted down there or the first serious sort of tree planting we did was in 2003 and some of those are now quite mature and the cattle sit under them a lot. Um, and so we planted sections down there and um, some of those were done really well. Some of them struggled um, through dry periods. And then behind me you might see there's a long belt and that's west. And in the afternoon it gives excellent shade along the edge there. The cattle will sit up underneath them. Um, they're fenced off. One day that some of those sections I may actually open up the plan was to leave part of it completely fenced forever, but to open up the small sections of it so that the cattle can get under them as well. Um, there are other trees we've planted in the paddocks, the little groups like that, and they've worked really well, and the cattle like them a lot. In the last couple of years, I've noticed a, quite a lot of self-sown trees that are growing, and they seem to do better than the ones that you plant. Um, and so for that reason, we haven't put the stock in there. In fact, we're noticing that in a few of our tree belts. We've done it in bits over now 20 years. Um, the trees here were planted in 2015. Um, and so they've done really well. Um, we started them with drippers for about the first three or four years of their life. We got them through the drought. And so by doing it in small bits, we're trying to make it manageable. It means that we can get water to them. This section here is part of a series of plantings in a sense. We've got small trees that are a couple of years old now in that section we planted a few years ago ourselves. Then you've got this section here, we've got that, those trees here that are now seven years old and beyond that we've got another section which has just been planted. So gradually we're building up three or four hundred meters in this particular section of gully and by doing it in bits um, it's manageable for us. You discover what works and what doesn't. Um, Paul has provided us the trees of basically a lot of the time 
and so hopefully we're seeing species that are surviving. Um, we've had mixed success in that regard. Some of them, I think some of the ones over here died because of too much water rather than too little over the last couple of years. Initially the biggest challenge was that the first trees we did, we didn't, we used to hand water and that really wasn't much of a success. We lost a lot and the percentage of survival I think was quite low. The ones that have survived have done really well, they must have been tough trees. Um, so I'd strongly encourage anyone that wants to try and plant trees if they can to put in some sort of, I don't know, it's called automated, but easy watering system. The big advantage of perhaps, might I say, of the drippers is that we can put a lot of water on occasionally rather than one bucket's worth several times a week. So our aim is to actually saturate the soil once every week or once every couple of weeks, depending on how the, as the plants develop so that they will have time to develop their roots. If you're constantly just watering on the surface, then they have surface roots. But yes, it's not something you need to transform your farm in one go. So we're, it's something each year we try to do a little bit more and uh, we're quite happy with the way it's gone.